Welcome to the Mindset by Design podcast with your host, the expert Andy Murphy, where you will learn the tips, tricks, and strategies he teaches his world-class clients to give you the skills to dominate any business. What's going on, Mindset by Design crew, and welcome to episode 314. Hope you're amazing as always, always mean it, always say it, always gonna say it, (laughs) but I really hope you are. Hope life's treating you beautiful, and if not, just remember, man, just remember, every day is a beautiful thing. Every day is a way that you can start again with a new perspective, a new energy, a new decision. You know, you just literally don't know who you're going to meet, who's going to change your life, what idea you're going to have, concept, what movie you're going to inspire inspire you to see the world a different way and take action. And at the end of the day, that's all life is. It's just one day, right? If you want to go there, it's now. But if you, if you want to go a little bit more, it's just one day. And you can do whatever you choose to in that day. You have 24 hours. You don't have to sleep. I suggest you do, but you don't have to, right? You don't even have to get out of bed. So you listening to this podcast right now, sitting where you're sitting, thinking the things that you're thinking, you can change. You can step up and do something different very, very easily. And it's just by making a decision. That's all. So if you need inspiration today, then hey, You've got 314 episodes to inspire you. Probably want to go and check some of them out. World-class guests. And also, you know what? Use it like a library. I've said this so many times over the years. But use the podcast like a library. And what I mean by that is every episode is so full of content. It's so full of just not noise and chatter. It's so full of information that you can apply now in your life, in your business. And that's what we want for you. You know, it's the reason why I started the podcast so many years ago. It's just to give people well, access to other people, right? Access to different ways of seeing the world and thinking. And the challenge becomes in the modern world is that we genuinely, genuinely get bombarded, is the right word, bombarded with noise. Noise from marketers, noise from marketing, noise from ads, just noise with clickbait, just noise that is going to get people to click on a page and guess what? Well, yeah, just earns the money. So the world right now, it's not real. It's been, it's, it's, it's so not real. It's less real than I think it's ever been in um, the history of this generation of mankind. But at the end of the day, this is the world we're living in, right? And we've got to navigate it. We've got to navigate it the best way we can. And the best way we can is stop focusing externally. It doesn't make sense. It's not real. It's just noise, right? But what is real is the inner world, right? And the, the crazy thing is about society and how, how we've been programmed, if you want to use that concept, is that we've been taught to focus externally on everything. Think about it, right? We've been taught to focus externally. And what does that mean? Well, that means that your success is defined for you, life is defined for you, um, it just everything is defined for you. And right now, there's so many rules around the world, even traveling and life is being defined for you. And it doesn't matter what you think about COVID or the vaccines or whatever it is, it's a totally different conversation. But at the end of the day, you are being given rules. And I want you to understand that the only rules are what is inside of you, right? Does that make sense? Because the outer world is created from your inner world. The outer world is created from your inner world. Do you understand that? It's not your outer world creating the inner world. It's your inner world (laughs) creating the outer world. Does that make sense? I hope so, right? I hope so, because that's the truth. How do you... Have, how does any business get started? How does any concept get started, right? It starts from someone's imagination, someone's desire, someone's decision. Does that make sense? So why would you think for any reason, man, any reason that your growth wouldn't be the same thing? But the crazy thing is in the world that we live in, so many people lie. And that's what today's episode's about. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But so many people lie, 
And it doesn't make sense to me because you sit on that lie. Does it ever feel good? No, even if it's a white lie, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't feel good. And the world is just full of lies these days. And it's a concept I've been um, pondering on more and more and more. And actually, my partner, my girl, has been um, researching this for me. It's narcissism. And the world is being... Yeah, there's more and more narcissists being created every single day. And it's a topic we'll talk about another time because I think it's important. And what's crazy is that a narcissist means that they will see your weaknesses, which are really you being vulnerable, and they will exploit them against you. And they'll exploit them against you to get what they want. Manipulation at the yeah, the strongest level. Now, we see this right through politics, of course, but we see this right through business, and we see this right through marketing, and we see this right through everything. We understand now, as we start to awaken up with the, with the digital platforms that aren't real, but are taking over our lives, that people literally fight and argue and lose friendships, and literally over what? over a comment on a social media platform that is really just playing a game with you. If you've never seen The Social Dilemma, by the way, it's a great documentary on Netflix. Please go and watch it. If you have never seen The Social Dilemma, you will never, once you watch it, you will never, ever, ever look at social media the same way again. You just won't because you understand that the AI is literally doing whatever it can to hook you in. It will pull friendships um, like things up from, from you having someone you haven't spoke to in 10 years. It will start putting comments um, and start sharing memories. It will start doing whatever it is to learn you to start bringing you back into the platform. It's crazy. It's crazy. And when you start to understand that, that we are being lied to. It's not about social. It's about Facebook and these organizations making money. That's all it's about. Understand that it's, that's what it's all about. Did it start out that way? Of course it didn't start out that way. It's just started out probably being social, right? But then people learned that they could make money by collecting people's data and then blasting that info, like whatever information they want to hear back to them. And that's the kind of crazy world. We live in an echo chamber. So if you hate something, you're going to see more hate. If you love something, you're going to see more love. That's what it is. So again, even on social media, your inner world creates your outer world. Does that make sense? Because even on social media, it creates it, right? Your own belief systems, your own attitudes, your own values, your own perspective on the world literally creates even social media. But it also creates how you see the world, your perspective, right? Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm going on a little rant and start off, but it's um, it's very interesting topic to me because it's something I don't do. I, I can't hurt people and I can't lie. And I can't do that because it goes against, just goes against who I am. But secondly, it's, I've been hurt in the past by these people, right? These narcissists, narcissists as business partners who really, really will just say whatever it is you want to hear and they will steal from you. I've had quite a few, a few business partners, say two or three just steal from me. Some hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and some thousands of dollars. But either way, they go home and they sleep fine. Do you know what I mean? When I was 27, 26, 27, I was putting together a $100 million resort in Fiji. And my business partner was my mentor. He was my best friend. I looked up to him, everything. Yet he stole my dad's money who invested in the company and did what? (laughs) I went and bought a boat. And I was going through bankruptcy, nervous breakdown, couldn't afford food, couldn't afford rent. And he literally went and bought a boat with my money and thought that was fine. Do you know what I mean? What's wrong with those people? (laughs) Well, there's lots wrong with those people, but I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? And as we get older and as we get wiser, we've got to really start looking at what this means to people, right? Of what this means to ourselves and what this means to life. And we can't just trust everybody, Although we, I personally want to trust everybody, but we can't trust everybody. There has to be that skill to analyze them, 
right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's one tactic we're going to talk about today. It's uh, definitely Forbes. It's a Forbes article. I'll get into it. Um, Research finds a new trick to tell and give someone is lying and it's their voice, right? And it's literally come out in February 2021. But it's far from a new trick. It's definitely not a new trick. They've been doing this for decades, but it's, um, it's, it comes from NLP. And NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming, obviously. That's probably what you know me for. I'm one of the ex- top experts in the world around that. But I've built it into performance-based and built it into working with CEOs and entrepreneurs and helping them move past whatever it is, so they can expand their vision of their company, they can expand their vision of um, stepping into the next stage of their life, whatever it is, we're retraining the nervous system and brain to be conditioned to step into the new, and as you step into the new, there's no reaction, right? Because often we step into the new and the brain goes, ah, what's going on? I'm scared. Even if you're not feeling fear, you're having a fear response. So what happens is, because you're having a fear response, um, yeah, we make the wrong decisions, or we hold ourselves back, or we don't have clear vision, right? So when we get past that, neuroconditioning is what I, uh, my concept, and what that means is then we're conditioning your nervous system and brain to step into the new world, or a new vision, or a new project, or the next stage of your life and business, and really be on fire. That's, that's what I do. So if that resonates with you, well, head over to andymurphy.online and, yeah, find mentoring and have a chat with me. <laughs> that's it. Have a chat with me, and we'll see what we can do. Um, but today, yes, I, I want to go into this. I want to go into this. But head over to the show notes. Make sure that you're hanging out with me on LinkedIn, where I'm going to be dominating. Make sure that you're in the Andy Murphy Mindset Facebook group. Um, I don't really care about Instagram, but you can find me on there, Andy Murphy Mindset. Um, but those are the two, right? Find me in the group and find me definitely, definitely on LinkedIn, as I'm going to be starting lives and doing awesome things in there. Um, what else? Yeah. If you're ready, just let's have a chat. And make sure that you've downloaded your Fire My Morning audio where I drop your into brain waves and we really tune that brain up so you can have your best day every single day. And oh, also, if you're a trader in any capacity, um, I've got something awesome being launched in the next, um, probably the next four weeks. Hopefully, if we can get it all done, funnels being built. Um, and what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I've also got something called the Expansion Project, but that's another topic. We're doing lives on Facebook around that with my business partner, Dean. But if you want to work with me specifically, then let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. And um, speaking of have a chat, shall I shut up and jump into this today? (laughs) I thought you might say that. Right, cool. I'll see you in a minute, and then I'll see you at the end of the show. Okay, okay, okay. I haven't done an article in, I think, a while, definitely a few episodes. So make sure you're sharing these things for me. Make sure you're writing a review. Crazy thing is about reviews. Apple makes you do it on your desktop computer or your laptop. What's that about, right? What's that about, Apple? Um, You can't do it from your phone? Mm, Confusing. (laughs) Confusing. But anyway, make sure you're doing that for me. But today, it's um, let's go into this. Research finds a new trick to telling if someone is lying, and it's their voice. Well, it's not a new trick, as I said before. And it's just one way. We have different ways. You can have physiology. You have eye accessing cues. So your eyes move in certain ways, right? And patterns which show behaviors. You've got micro muscles on your face. You have your own intuition. Um, You're reading patterns of behavior. All of these are very different, right? Than than just it's their voice. But we're going to read into this article. It's by Alison um, Escalande. 
and she's a contributor to Forbes, which is which is awesome. I'm in the Forbes Coaching Council, but I um, yeah, I want to put some articles out on here, and I'm also getting some articles wrote for Yahoo Finance and things like that. So if you're in that game, um, trading and finance and real estate and stuff, then yeah, let's chat too. But let's take a look at this article. You know, you know me, I'm not the best reader in the world. I have a little bit of dyslexia, but as always, <laughs> I do my best. So the recent pandemic of misinformation has made us recognize just how important it is to know if someone is telling the truth. Some liars in 2021 are easy to recognize, like space ladies starting wildfires in California or lizard people controlling the world. Well, I don't know, Forbes. <laughs> they might not be lies. Who knows, right? But other lies are less obvious. Now, researchers have identified a built-in mechanism that our brain uses to detect when someone is lying. So it's their voice. Not only did the researchers find that our voices betray a particular sound signature when they tell the truth, but that our brains also pick up on their people or the people automatically. So it's all about it's all about prosody. Prosody refers to the qualities of our voice, right? So the rhythmic it has. And when we stress, tones, right? So if you think about prosody as a musical um, note of our voice or the music of our voice, it's still confusing. Then think of an adult speaking playfully to a child. Their voice goes up and down in the sing-song quality. On the other hand, if the voice lacks prosody, we would call it flat and um, toneless. So the other way to look at this is it's also, this is not in the article, but this is me. Um, you've got the pace of the voice, right? How fast it is, how slow it is, right? The timbre of the voice. So think of Sean Connery, right? Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> That's timber. You have pace, pitch, timber of the voice. And there's all these other ones that, you, you know, play yeah, play with, with, with the sound of our voice. But if you start to just really start to pay attention, then what has to happen is what this article doesn't talk about is you really like, like when you're reading body language and you're reading physiology, you're reading micro muscles or eye axis and cues that we were talking about. Then what happens is you still have to have a baseline of the person. If you just start looking at them, they might have different eye axis and cues. They might be alternatively orientated, right? So that's the left and right hand. It, it can be just like the brain, right? The, on the eye axis and cues. Micro muscles, we don't know how. If we've never met the person before, we really, really don't know how. The, the, they could be exceptionally animated in general, right? They could be really not animated. But if you don't know that baseline check, it's very easy for them to lie and trick you, which the article doesn't cover, but hey, that's why you're here, right? I'm covering it. So let me carry on. So in order to see how people tell lies, the researchers studied the prosody of how they said things. And they studied people who spoke different languages, which led to them to conclude that people tell lies the same way in English, French, or Spanish. Okay, so that doesn't mean Asian languages, it doesn't mean other dialects, right? So the researchers grouped that people said into two categories. Certain, honest, and uncertain, and dishonest. Then they recorded patients making statements and tracked how people perceived them. A speaker was thought to be uncertain or dishonest began with less intensity at the beginning of the word. Said the word with a rising intonation and spoke more slowly with a more variable pitch. In other words, they sound like my son when he tells me that he has brushed his teeth. I don't have a son, by the way. That is um, the interviewer. But in other words, they sound like my son when he's brushing the teeth. People sound like they are trying harder when they are lying, right? Now, from my side, there's expert liars. If you truly believe it neurologically and chemically, then it's very hard to read people who are, who, who are this. And this is why I talked about before, narcissists, right? And um, they, they you just, yeah, they're experts at lying because they 100% believe it in their own head. So on the other hand, people sounded more certain or honest when they spoke with a faster speech rate, placing greater intensity in the middle of the word 
Listeners found it especially convincing when the speaker's pitch fell at the end of the word. People speak faster when they are telling the truth because telling the truth takes less effort. Again, unless you are, you got it, right? So, so when people are telling the truth, right, which is really what we want to zone in on, because if we really understand when people are telling the truth and we can read that, then it becomes very apparent when someone is not. Does, does that make sense? Um, that's what I prefer to focus on, right? So then you can really tell that contrast frame between the, between the, two, the two voices or the two types of people or the two micro muscles or whatever it is. So when people are telling the truth, they use different prosodic signatures when they had an audience. They also sounded this way depending on how certain they felt when they were alone. The fact that these patterns happened in three different languages led to the researchers to think that prosodic signatures carries natural rather than culturally learned language dependent conventional meaning. Very interesting, right? So, but they're very similar languages, right? So their love languages are the Latin languages. So that might be something to do with it, but it could also be human beings. So if the researchers are right, then there's a natural encoded way of telling the truth or lying in humans across culture. This would be incredibly helpful when evaluating what people tell us. However, the study used three Western languages, which does not eliminate the possibility that it is a Western way of lying and not common to all cultures. Western, yes, but like we discussed, it's very specific languages. So, um, but the most interesting finding was that the different prosotic signatures were honesty or dishonesty immediately impacted the working memories of the listeners. The listeners' brains automatically registered a perception of whether the speaker was truthful or not, even when the listener wasn't being asked to determine honesty. That's great, right? That's great that we can try and protect ourselves. It's exciting to think that we have built, we are built in a way to detect if someone sounds reliable or unreliable. This le- but this leaves us with the first two problems. First, we need to hear the voice to detect the lie. Not hearing someone's voice in, in a tweet is probably a big reason why social media is so effective at spreading misinformation. Second, since certainty and honesty sound the same, the prosodic signature does nothing to help us detect the most powerful liars of all. Because the best liars believe their own lies. They will sound certain when they share their claims. So that's the article. Now, is it the best article? No, I don't believe it is the best article. I don't think we believe it's the best wrote, but it's a fantastic topic, right? And it's, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes because it depends on your nature. If you're a shady person, then it's probably meaning that you're going to start looking at everyone in a shady perspective, right? Your filter system in your brain is going to actually focus on people being shady. But if you're honest, like myself, then what happens is it's like, you know, you, you look through that frame of the world, and it, it, it's messed up, man. It's messed up because if I say something, I, I, I give everything I can to do it. If I say it, then I, I, it's true, right? Or my knowledge of truth at the time. And so when you're dealing with business, especially online, people become very, very good at reading scripts. They become very, very good at becoming behind the camera and they become very, very good, especially on Facebook, for example, at writing sales copy. And sales copy is neuro-linguistic programming, NLP. So what it is, they've used it for manipulation. Now, I've got no problem with the word manipulation, right? Manipulation, you can manipulate someone into um, eating healthy and feeling good, right? But often what happens in marketing is depressed pain points, and those pain points bring us into people into the moment, so they resonate with the pain, so then they take action, right? That's a classic marketing trick, if you want to call it that, but it's a, a classic marketing, um, just the way it's taught, right? And is it messed up? Yeah, it's messed up. It is. It's, it's messed up, right? Because at the end of the day, if people should see the benefits. 
What's it going to do for them in a good way, right? And if everyone was just honest, then what happens is is th- th- there'd be no need for this. But human beings are a strange <laughs> breed. They are. And there's so many traumas in the past. There's so many people whose brain has been wired the wrong way. There's so many environments that change and the survival mechanism in someone's head. So it's, it's rather than telling the truth, like in Latin America is a classic, right? And I love Latin America. I live here part time. And but rather than a lot of places, rather than telling you no, they'll just go silent or they won't say anything. Right. And that's OK, too. Or they'll tell you, yes, they can do it, but really they can't. They just don't want the confrontation or they just don't want to tell you that they can't do it. So they'll, they'll, they'll lie. Right. Now, is that wrong? Yeah, it's messed up. It's messed up because people rely on these things. And I'm just dealing with a few people right now. It's very interesting who, who, who are lying. And it's bizarre to me. But that's okay. <laughs> if it's bizarre to me, it means that I just have to get better at reading these skills. And like I said at the start of this, the article didn't cover different ways to, um, yeah, to, to actually read lying, whether it's eye accessing cues, whether it's your actual own intuition, whether it's micro muscles on the face, whether it's reading body language, whether it's reading language patterns. There's so many other ways that we can tell if someone's lying, but at the end of the day, we just got to change our filter to protect ourselves, right? Just to protect ourselves because... Often what happens is salespeople and marketers, they love when people are vulnerable and open, right? Vulnerable and open means that they can create a sale. doesn't mean they can deliver the result. That's the same with the coaching industry. It's completely messed up because people are lying, but they don't realize they're lying, right? They're taught the same marketing tactics, high ticket sales, right? High ticket sales, I focus on my niche, yeah, I get it. And that's cool. But you're lying still. Why are they lying? Why are they lying? They're lying because they really can't do the job to the level that they think they can. So it's really lack of awareness. So deep inside, it's not a lie to them, but externally it becomes misinformation, right? It's the same with how many agencies have you tried, right? Marketing agencies. And they think they can do the job, but then when it comes down to it, they can't. And it, it's just time after time after time. I see all of these things over the years. So when you're hiring somebody, whether you're um, in management, whether you're bringing on new salespeople, whether you are dealing with a salesperson, right? Whether you're dealing with a marketer, whether you're dealing with someone on the street who's, who's panhandling something, right? All of these things, they become very proficient at telling a version of reality that you want to hear. Does that make sense? So what we've got to have is our wits about us. We've got to have, be bobbing and a weaving, have our game face on, and really don't take everyone's word as, as golden. Because just because you wouldn't manipulate or hurt or, or, or say anything to somebody, there's so many people out there that do, and they don't even often mean to hurt you. They just go in to get what they want, and they don't care about the consequences. I had a, a business partner. His first name's Amir. Um, I won't give his last name. He is a marketer out there. He came into my company. This is Mindset by Design. And this really quite hurt it. This is probably like five years ago. And he said he could do all these things because of all these things he's done in the past. And I'd known him for a little bit from the outside for a while. Now, Amir basically come into my company and I trusted him. He set up a fake ad agency that was paying $3,000 a month for. He set up all of these other things and I was paying like five, six, seven grand a month just going out. But he was stealing it all. And what else he was doing? He was selling other products and that he had and then he was putting them into my group so I could look after them. He was also selling um, memberships, lifetime memberships to my academy and he was keeping the money. And then the last thing he said to me was like, you need to be more careful, you need to be more involved in your business. Well, <laughs> there's a great lesson, right? Absolutely. But I trusted him. 
So what that means is that, again, these are the lessons that we all have to learn. Again, back in the day, right? Resort, business partner, mentor, steal all my money. Why? Because I trusted him. I trusted his words and he highly manipulated me. So as I come over the years, doesn't mean that I will change to be um, not honest or truthful or trusting. I will always be that. But the lesson is we always must have a game face on when we're dealing with people and just trust you, your intuition, these little um, these little insights that you get when you're dealing with people or reading people or someone says in front of you. And at the end of the day, the, I'll leave it on this. The end of the day, there's the classic statement, right? Or classic fable, I should say. And the fable is this, right? I'm going to probably butcher it or mess it up a bit. But look, I'll probably even make different animals up. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it like this. So scorpion, caterpillar, and they've got to cross a river. And the caterpillar's like, I, I can't cross that river. I'm going I'm to get hurt. And the scorpion says, it's all right. You can ride on my back. I'll take you across. I can swim well. And the caterpillar's like, well, yeah, but you're going to sting me. And the scorpion's like, I'm not going to sting you. I'm not going to sting you. Why am I going to sting you? There's no reason to sting you. And the caterpillar's like, yeah, because you're a scorpion. You're going to sting me. It's what you do, Right. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not going to sting you. Just get on my back. I'll take you across the river. So he goes, all right, I'll trust you. Jumped on his back, got across the river, was dead by the time he got there. Scorpion stung him. And as he's dying and taking his last breaths on the other side of the, um, on the, other side of the river, he's like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you kill me? Why did you hurt me? I trusted you. You said you wouldn't. I trusted you. And the scorpion's like, yeah, I know. But I'm a scorpion, aren't I? That's just what I do. And when you start looking at human beings like that, well, they tell you who they are very early on in the relationship. They'll tell you if they've hurt people in the past. They'll tell you these things of danger. They'll tell you where they've messed around. They, t- they tell you. And then we laugh and go, oh, won't happen to me. But it will. It will. And at the end of the day, you've got to keep that circle small. And you've got to stay focused on your inner world to create your outer world. And if you can do that, you live a beautiful life. You live a beautiful life. And speaking of a beautiful life, there we go, crew. There's the end of episode 314. Epic, epic, epic. Hopefully you got some information from that. If you want to know any more, you know where to find me. Um, also, let's level you up. It's time, right? It's time to level you up and do something different. No matter what stage of business and life you are, there's always the next stage and I want to show you that so whether you've hit a ceiling whether you're doing an exit strategy whether you're just stuck whether you need clarity and just want to know what's next then you need my systems neuroconditioning NLP neuroscience is how we really retrain you to expand I've helped people go from a hundred grand a month to 65 million dollars in a year and I've not taught them a single business tactic Think about that, right? Think about that. So if that sounds like what you want, head over to andymurphy.online, hit the mentoring, apply, and we can have a little chat and see if this system or myself is right for you today. Sound good? Beautiful. So until then, hit those show notes up. There's lots of cool links. Find me on LinkedIn. Find me on Facebook, Andy Murphy Mindset. Pretty easy, pretty easy. So time to do something different today and... um, Yeah, until then, you have a beautiful week. And um, oh, yeah, (laughs) why don't you smile for me? See you soon. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy. We'll catch you next time.